Hi, Noor. Hi. Thanks for coming on to the second floor. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you won our contest back. I know. I was so uh, in Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because you have been one of our very first supporters. Yeah. When we started. Like, we've known each other for a long time. So when you started this podcast, it was just something that, like, I was very, like, I wanted to be supportive of it. Yeah. And it was something very unique and exciting. And yeah. I was just, you know, I was excited to be a, be a fan pretty much. Well, I appreciate yeah. it. I appreciate you coming on because <laughs> we've been through ups and downs with it. And it's cool to have mm -hmm. someone that actually deserves to be it. Because I was like, I was kind of worried because yeah. we had a lot of people that submitted. And I was like, what if we bring on and feature someone that hasn't, like, isn't really doesn't supporting, know it is, yeah. and doesn't know what it is, and they were just tagged in the comments? Yeah. Uh, so I'm glad that it was you, because um, yeah. then, you know, it's like you have been an actual true supporter. So I appreciate that. Yeah. I think in this episode, we're going to talk about um, a little bit of school, mm -hmm. right? A little bit of uh, mental and physical health, because yeah. I know that's important to you. And mm -hmm. we kind of discussed that off record yeah we, we've always had good conversations about this that kind of stuff because i feel like we're both kind of passionate about these topics as well so yeah 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 and we have we've had coffees i don't know every really odd times yeah. <laughs> uh, with hanny shout out hanny and um yeah they've always been good conversations yeah. so i'm excited to kind of dive into it mm -hmm. um yeah just for the audience that's listening this is going to be on those topics so mm -hmm. um you know make sure to tune in so yeah, I mean, let's start off with school since that was our first kind of topic that we were going to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, where are you at with your with school and, and mm -hmm. you know, why is it important to you? What are you kind of yeah. getting out of it? So I'm finally finishing my last semester after eight years of school. So I did do a psychology degree for five years at the U of A. And honestly, like the first year was something that was very tough, especially because like I changed my mind so many times about what I wanted to do with my life. You know, you take all the bunch of courses, um, you like some of them, you hate some of them, you fail some of them, you drop out of some of them, you know? So it was something very difficult to try to figure out what you wanted, what I wanted to do with my life. And I felt like a lot of people were on the same boat as well. So I did change my mind so many times about what I wanted to do. And yeah, the first year was such a struggle. Um, and the more courses that I took, I realized what is something that I'm actually like interested in. And what really helped is that like I come from a family that is very supportive of uh, doing things that I enjoy doing. So my family were never like, oh, no, you, you got to be a doctor. You got to be, I don't know, like a lawyer, an engineer. It was more like do what makes you happy. And then, you know, you do big things when you are actually enjoying what you do and you, you're more passionate about it. So I kind of took that advice and I chose psychology as my major because it was something that was very interesting to me and mental health in general. Um, it was something that I'm very passionate about. And yeah, so fast forward, um, I finished my degree in psychology and then so I wanted something that I can do more with. I was v very interested in patient care. And that's something that I always saw myself doing. And I looked into, into dental hygiene and um, I shadowed some dentists as well. And I saw I liked that aspect of like patient care. Uh, you get to spend more time with someone when they're in the dental chair and you get to know them. It was it wasn't necessarily like me like wanting to see what people had for dinner or for lunch. It was more like <laughs> it was more like um, building that connection with someone and having that one on one conversation and um it was something very rewarding you know so mm -hmm. yeah i looked into it and i got in so now i'm finishing my last semester and yeah um university in general is just not an easy it's not an easy uh journey and there's a lot of learning experience that came throughout um uh, the whole like university journey in general so a lot of uh learning about yourself um the challenges that come in the way um and yeah so it was something that i had to figure out because i needed to figure out okay how can i overcome those challenges that come in the way for example um it helped me realize how to manage my stress or uh it helped me build connections as well 
it will help me uh, prioritize my mental health and my physical health as well. So, yeah. yeah. How did you, because here's, here's a lot of, like a lot of undergrad students, mm -hmm. a lot of students in general, they kind of go through a period of time, especially in sciences, we know yeah. this, where they don't know what they want to do. Oh, yeah. Like with, with, with other, I guess, industries or career paths, mm -hmm. a lot of it's, you get this, you're going into this, yeah. or you can specialize. Mm -hmm. With sciences, is very general. General, very everyone general. takes general sciences if they don't know what they're doing, right? Yeah. So with you, how did you figure out? Okay, dental hygiene was the thing that you're going to focus on because you were mm -hmm. in school for a long, like you've been in school for a long time, right? Yeah. And a lot of people, if they don't know what they're doing, mm -hmm. they burn out very, very quickly. Exactly. So they don't, mm -hmm. they can't do more school because they just don't have the motivation. So yeah. what was the factor for you where it was like, okay, you know, I'm in sciences. Mm -hmm. I kind of get to choose all these opportunities. Mm -hmm. What was the thing that made you decide? I think um, I just I'm a, like I'm a very social person. So the aspect of me wanting to improve someone's oral health, for example, or, or educate them or make an impact on someone's life. It doesn't have to be teeth related is something that I, I, I wanted to do. So with my psychology degree, it helped me to help me use it on myself and with the people that are important to me or um, so that kind of I was able to apply it to my life and I also wanted something where the market for dental hygiene was very popular mm -hmm. right now so I looked into that I've done a lot of research and I saw that this is something that I can see myself doing the hours are flexible you know I can have I can have a work-life balance with that and that's something that was important to me as well so it's uh there's a lot of factors that played into it so what i would recommend is you gotta you gotta go through that first tough year in order to figure out okay what what, what are you good at and um what are you not good at so i realized that i hated chemistry for example i hated um math and I was good in them in high school, but in university, it's a different experience. It's more real life. Like now you're an adult, you you're, you have to decide what you want to do for the rest of your life. And even though it was tough, and I feel like a lot of people that I was uh, going to school with were on the same boat because we all changed what we wanted to do based on that first year. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it was... It was a good learning experience and now um, I can actually apply m whatever I learned during that first undergrad into what I'm doing right now and just you know yeah I feel like there's a lot of people in our age group that mm -hmm. uh, fear uh, making the decision yeah so it's exactly. like there are opportunities to go into mm -hmm. dentistry pharmacy engineering all these yeah good routes respectable mm -hmm. careers that they can make for themselves but they what I hear is they don't want to make the wrong decision. I know. And that's very common. Yeah, very common. Yeah. So like a lot of people, they do a degree and they're like, hey, I don't know what to do with it now. Or this is I don't enjoy doing this. Like I, I can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life. Yeah. So that's why doing that, taking extra courses, finding out what you enjoy doing is really going to make an impact on your decision of what you want to do also getting some advice and guidance for people from people that are have been through the same path you know yeah so i felt like that really helped me a lot doing your research always having a backup plan so if one thing doesn't work maybe look at, into other schools that it might be easier for you to apply and a higher chance for you to get in you know mm -hmm. um so yeah like it's just a lot of trial and error throughout the whole journey you know yeah 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 i feel like that is a one thing that a lot of people don't do mm -hmm. is they don't test exactly. things especially if they don't know what they want mm -hmm. so they're kind of in the same route they're doing the same routine and they don't test things because it might be out of the realm yeah. um you know personally like you know me you've known me for years i like to test the waters on things and yeah. throw myself out there and if exactly. i look like a fool i look like a fool mm -hmm. but um you know going through that i think midway through my degree i made the switch and was like okay i know i'm not going to be in any sort of science field yeah. even though i'm good at it mm -hmm. so now what am i going to do am i going to exactly. switch or no so i said i'm going to get my degree mm -hmm. and then i will make the decision from there mm -hmm. and um not being afraid of 
the decision because my parents thought I was going to be an optometrist by now. Yeah. That's what they had mm -hmm. planned. Mm -hmm. They were like, yep, be, yeah. you know, so now that I'm not, but I'm still able to make a good living, um, still able to do the things that I like doing. Exactly. Um, especially with our background, right? Because mm -hmm. uh, the, a lot of parents, you know, they come from overseas <laughs> and, you know, yeah. their dream is for their kid to do very well and be respectable and, and have the life that they couldn't. So, I mean, especially for you as a, as a female, how did you, you know, navigate that? Mm -hmm. How was the navigation? I know you said your parents are very supportive. So, yeah. um, but a lot of parents and a lot of people, they say, no, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. exactly. And this is what I expect because we gave you this life. Mm -hmm. What do you, th what do you think on those? So honestly, you're like the perfect example for that. Like you did your science degree and you had your side business um as well like with your uh videos that you do and your rapping that you do as well so i feel like you're a living example of that so you you tried university you found out that sciences is not your thing but you did have a backup plan and and it was something that you're passionate about right so you you worked on your dream you know you worked on what you're good at and now you're doing well with that you know you're only going up from here kind of thing so even though you did school and you found out that it's not for you, like you still did your degree, you know, you, you gave it a shot. You did, even though it did get challenging at some times and you realized that, yeah, this is not the thing for me, you gave it, gave it the time and the effort as well. And it's important to remember that like you, even though the, the, these challenges might arise, that you're still gonna put in your 100% potential before you make the decision of whether this is for you or not, you know? So it's nice that you even gave it a shot. So your parents might have said things like, yeah, I know you got to be an engineer and whatever, um, but you, you, you did try it, you know? So your parents can't say that, no, you didn't give it a shot. Like you, mm -hmm. you're just being lazy kind of thing. No, you know, um, you gave it a shot and you saw, you realized throughout this journey that okay this is now doing that kind of stuff on the side is what you're passionate about and this is what you can actually give in your hundred percent and have it's more rewarding for you because this is something that you're you've been working on you know mm -hmm. this is something that you enjoy doing and you're good at and you can always um, improve on yourself because um you know this is something that that's for you and this is your project you know yeah i feel like the way I really found out was I could see it in my head. Yeah. I could see the steps going up, mm -hmm. right? So um, I could see opportunity in, you know, making it something. I, I think uh, if you can't see that ladder of like mm -hmm. so on so success or elevating, yeah. I think that then if you can't see it, then it's probably not for you, mm -hmm. right? If you're exactly. contemplating, because I know a lot of girls and guys, they don't know what they want to do. Yeah. And they're like, oh, should I go into this? Oh, it, you know, makes good money. Oh, my parents would be happy. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, can you close your eyes and see it in five years? Like, can you see where you're going to yeah, be? Exactly. Uh, but and that's that's I think that's a big question. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think I think that needs to be answered. I know you were mentioning about like, you know, mental and physical health. Mm -hmm. Why is that important to you? What's what's the yeah. what's the reason? So the reason why that is important to me is because I had to find an outlet to deal with the stress that came with school, you know? So people have different ways of dealing with stress and I found that taking care of my mental health. So to define that, it's more of the things that make me happy, you know, making more time with my family and friends, um, doing more of the things that I love to do, uh, watching Netflix sometimes to recharge, you know, something, something as simple as that is really gonna help impact how I go with school, you know, like I can actually do well because I'm taking the time for myself to take care of my health and my well-being, and always being mindful of how I'm feeling, you know, not letting myself go astray because yeah. I feel like a lot of people they lose themselves in um, kind of like school, like it becomes like, it is a very important goal, but don't forget yourself in the process. You know, you're just as important as your grades are. 
And taking that time for yourself is really going to help make an impact on how well you do in school. You know, you're not going to be burnt out. You're going to do a lot better. And it's just, you know, something that's very, I think it's important for us to be mindful of during the process mm -hmm. of going to school and physical health. So a lot of people, for example, they don't know how to work out, you know, and it took me a while for me to learn how to how to exercise or what I enjoy doing. But putting myself in the gym, you know, trying out new things, I had some um, people guide me through it, like how to exercise and stuff like that. And I realized that that's something that's I enjoy doing. So I became more consistent with it. However, some people can find maybe going to running, going for for a jog or um, doing a spin class. You know, that's just as important to incorporate into your life during the process of going to school um, because it does, you know, physiologically, it does really help you. Um, it keeps you, it reminds you of what's important to you and that's yourself mm -hmm. most of all. And yeah, that's something that like, I think is really important for us not to forget about. Yeah, I think a lot of people too, mm -hmm. I mean, students in general, they like to um, escape the problems yeah. of school. So they do what? <laughs> they party, yeah, exactly. they drink, mm -hmm. they go crazy. Mm -hmm. um, it's a form of escapism, right? And That's I mean, true. it can go down to even like Netflix or like mm -hmm. small little addictions, being on your phone 24-7, yeah, that type exactly. of thing. Do you have something that you can define <laughs> as escapism for you? escapism oh my god it's yeah. napping <laughs> napping napping yeah so you so, so when you want to escape from your problems you just go oh 100 <laughs> percent. well like obviously like i said it's like working out you know uh going out with my friends um spending more time with my family stuff like that but would you define that as escapism or do you define that as part of relaxation and it's recharging part of relaxation. right escapism yeah. i would say that a lot of us uh have different ways of escaping yeah our stressors yeah and my mind personally is napping is it and then it helped because it does help me recharge you know mm -hmm. i feel like my battery would be at zero percent and then when i nap it's at, i'm back to a hundred percent and now i can actually deal with that stressor that's on my mind mm. you know what i mean yeah yeah what would you say is your Mine? Oh. Escapism. <laughs> Partying. No, I'm kidding. Uh, my escapism, I would say uh, scrolling social media. Yeah. That's, that's I fair. have a oh, very yeah. bad problem with that's that. That's a very common one, actually. I, uh, if I have 20 different things to do, yeah. I will, if I, especially if I'm home, I will lay on the couch and just scroll every social media platform I have mm -hmm. on my phone yeah. until I'm not thinking about me i'm thinking about whatever i'm seeing on the f on the phone and yeah. it's been it gets bad sometimes so mm -hmm. you know i'm on on the phone for an hour or more and it's like and then you wake up you're like whoa what the hell happened yeah. and i have to go you know do what i need to do yeah. but um i'm working on it so yeah people i'm not addicted <laughs> how are by you any working means, on it <laughs> <laughs> oh now we're getting into curious. me now yes uh, <laughs> Uh, focusing on like the gym, like yeah. gym has always been important to me. Yeah, uh, that's good. It's it's always been there. I've always gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been the most consistent with it, but I feel um, when I go, it's a form of escapism mm -hmm. because it's not it's not like anything else. You get in the gym and you're focused. All you're doing is thinking about what's in front of you, the reps, mm -hmm. the reps, the reps, right? Yeah. Um, and I, the nice thing is, is I can visualize what I want to look like or what I want to feel like. Mm -hmm. And I feel great when I leave the gym. So yeah. I'm trying to kind of push that in That's that great. route where it's like, okay, I could spend an hour on my phone, but I could go to the gym for yeah, an hour exactly. too. Yeah. So it's a kind of around the same mm -hmm. time frame. So yeah. luckily I, I have other things that I can focus on too. Mm -hmm. uh, this video stuff, the music stuff, that's also another form of escape because mm -hmm. it's fun. Yeah, right? Doing exactly. this podcast is fun, yeah. right? So <laughs> um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But for you too, like you, you said, you know, fitness is, is, is very important. Um, for a lot of girls, they don't go to the gym that much, or maybe yeah. they do cardio three or four, mm -hmm. maybe two days a week. Yeah. Um, what, what have you found that's worked for you in the gym? Mm -hmm. So that's actually very common. And I can speak for myself as well, because I was, I only did cardio 
when I first started. Yeah, or those like Zumba classes, you know. Yeah. Oh, I don't want to go to the gym. I'll go do a Zumba class or like <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a, a, good a yoga though. class. <laughs> yeah. Like I've tried that and it's actually pretty fun. Um, so yeah, at least I got myself to go. That's the first thing. But what really helped is watching videos, like watching YouTube videos, Instagram videos, kind of making f- like little folders of like every body part that I want to work on and what kind of workouts I want to do when I get there. Mm-hmm. You know, I felt like that really was a good thing that I started doing and that helped me stay consistent because I always wanted to try like a new exercise when I went. And um, I had my brother kind of coach me at the beginning as well. And having that workout buddy as well is something that really helps Mm -hmm. you know it helps motivate you as long as like you're not just sitting on the mats like talking yeah you know actually having like a good workout and sweating is something very rewarding like once you're done your workout it just you feel better you look better you know Mm -hmm. it helps with your self-esteem and confidence yeah so yeah um honestly just like working out with other people really helped watching a lot of videos learning more about why why i need to do certain things how to do certain things like the right form is really important yeah um and yeah kind of like dedicating a, like an hour for uh, a day mm-hmm. to go to the gym actually making the time so once you put in your schedule and you see it there it's it kind of reinforces you to go it helps you realize the importance of it since it's there in front of you it's gonna you're gonna want to check that off the list you know what i mean mm-hmm. so that was at the beginning, but now it's become more of a habit. And like they said, uh, like a lot of people say, it, it takes like 21 days to like form a habit. And it does actually, like now I feel because I've become more consistent and I feel like if I was to go a week without working out, I'd still go back to it. I wouldn't completely cut it off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What about eating? What's eating, your, that's the real struggle. You know, the, the, the chaos of school can obviously yeah. you know that. So mm-hmm. what's... What do you do? And then this is for all the, you know, the girls that are listening. Mm-hmm. Maybe give some advice on that because I know you've been, you know, going to the gym for years. But yeah. what's something, you know, you're full time school, mm-hmm. working on the evenings and weekends, hustling, right? Mm-hmm. How do you manage that side so of things? So eating is honestly. So the reason why I work out a lot is because I love to eat. For That's for me personally. So a lot of people, some people, they don't eat when they're stressed. Some people, they overeat when they're stressed. Um just being mindful of what you're doing. So maybe trying to, because you're being mindful of what you're eating, Mm -hmm. replacing that with better choices, you know, or for example, not eating after a certain time. Mm -hmm. So I did intermittent fasting for a while and that really helped. And it wasn't too bad because for example, I would only eat from 11 to six, you know, and, and that was a good time to manage my eating um so that was kind of something that i incorporated um also just packing healthy things to take with you to school like so you snacks can and stuff on. yeah for sure so yeah. just replacing those uh bad things for you with things that for example vegetables um for you to pack with you when you go to school so you can munch on i think and it helps you not spend a lot of money at school <laughs> yeah you know what i mean so i think that would be like a good thing to incorporate yeah especially while going to school yeah you know so yeah that makes sense mm-hmm. i think uh I, I think for me that's always been the and i'm sure it's for a lot of yeah. people is the, the nutrition side mm-hmm. i like to eat too for sure. um i think uh it's it's a matter i think it's a matter of like small steps right i mean yeah. everything we're talking about it's like okay just make sure you go mm-hmm. like go to the gym don't yeah. even have a plan just go exactly right um taking the time to learn a little bit of it mm-hmm. so you're not scared of mm-hmm what it is that's there yeah exactly. um because there's a you know there's a little fear to that mm-hmm. um i think it's just starting what uh have you had any troubles in terms of you know being a female in you know dental hygiene and mm-hmm. and just being a female uh, with a muslim background mm-hmm. in any in any part of your life because mm-hmm. i know a lot of people can relate to that and i don't want to get yeah. too deep into it because obviously it's kind of a Mm-hmm. iffy subject but yeah, i know especially with a lot of jobs mm-hmm. i've had personal troubles with that mm-hmm. and i've had to find ways to be creative mm-hmm. um what about you 
I know you've always been the school route, so yeah. maybe you haven't had any problems, but, mm-hmm. you know, have you had any problems? I mean, that is a very common thing. Um, I, I, I was just lucky enough that my family was very supportive. So in, like, the Muslim or Ar- Arabic or brown culture, uh, the girl usually, like, has a certain role. So it's for her to, like, finish high school and... Get married. Get married, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, that's everyone wants Shout to. Shout out to all the brown girls <laughs> and Arab girls that are married right now. Yeah. No offense to you guys, but <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, no, that's, of course, that's yeah. the way it's kind of been There's ingrained. a timeline, yeah. There's a timeline, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so what, okay, how do you feel about that first? Mm-hmm. You know, and how important is further education? Yeah. You know, because you've all, you've been in education, mm-hmm. like you've been in it. Exactly. Like there's high school, then there's undergrad, then there's even yeah. more of that. And you've done, <laughs> you're on the more side. Yeah, the road never yeah, ends. The road is never ending. Yeah. So I talk think, on that a little bit. Um, so school is not about just like taking a subject, passing the course. It was more about finding out who you are and what are what is important to you. So I think during that school journey like i've become a completely different person since i graduated high school you know it's because of everything that i've been through you know it's a it's a learning process and it changes you so be like i know there's a certain timeline like oh some people they prefer to get married right away maybe not go to school why is that though i want to know like why do arab girls or even not not just arab girls just you know immigrant brown girls in general why do they put marriage as such a that's like a that's like a milestone yeah like they're proud you know I they know. showcase their husband <laughs> and i know girls like they're all highlights yeah. wedding highlight this yeah. you know hashtag forever this and <laughs> what is what is that why is it so important in our culture i think it's because just over time maybe back in the day women used to get married a lot younger and also another thing that girls do in general is that they over fantasize the idea of marriage so they maybe go in in it for the wrong reasons sometimes because it's more freedom sometimes it's just uh being with someone you know or maybe there's a lot of social pressure from parents or like other friends or people around you that are getting married at a young age so makes you feel like hey this is what i need to do as well Mm. Uh, for me it was different because school was always number number one for me like i grew up in a family where education comes first. And um, and I'm glad that I took that route because it helped me figure out who I was. And now I know what I want for myself in the future. So it's made me more, I would say independent and uh, just not wanting to depend on someone else to provide for me kind of thing, you know? Um, so I think it's just the idea of marriage. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's maybe in the movies or something. They make it seem like it's all that. It's the it's it's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like obviously, like marriage is great. Like I I see my parents, and that's some the kind of like marriage that I want for myself. You know, Mm -hmm. and uh, having that support from someone, you just have to learn how to learn more about yourself in order to pick the right person for you. Instead of just being indulged in the idea of getting married, it is. Learning about yourself is going to help you pick who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's tough, right? I mean, mm-hmm. especially when you're when you marry so early. Yeah, you're exactly. You're 20, 21, 22. Mm-hmm. You don't even know. Like, I know when I was 21, I had no idea what I, I was know. doing, right? Like, Same. I was not like this. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I think also social pressures, I think, because we're mm-hmm. always in a group. Especially exactly. we're very family oriented. Mm-hmm. So if your family, siblings or cousins, especially cousins, mm-hmm. uh, shout out to all my cousins that have gotten married the last four years and put the pressure on me now to get <laughs> married because that's the pressure on yeah. me now. Um, and I feel it. Yeah. Right? And I'm a guy. It doesn't it's really, It's not as much, mm-hmm. but I can understand it from a woman's perspective because yeah. that's like, yo, you got to go. Like, I you know. gotta, <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know. Do you think it's changing, though? Do you think that that's... I don't think it's changing. You no? Know, do you no. think it's getting worse? Do you think that... I think it's still the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, if you get married early, that's great. Like, as long as you found the right person for you, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, that's actually something even... Can we go through the criteria often. of what's right? <laughs> what's right in what? Like, what's right in a person? 
What's right? Because you're like you like if you find the right person. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, you would have a different like obviously your right would be biased mm -hmm. compared to someone exactly. else. But I mean, I'm talking about the overall uh, culture. Yeah. From our culture, what do you think is the right? I from the in the terms of culture, I would say yeah. someone who has kind of like a goal or something they're working on, like they have a steady job, they have ambitions, you know, things that they're working towards. Now, do both partners have to have it or just the male or the female? It's, um, it's weird because I feel like in our culture, yeah, it's more like, okay, as long as the guy has it, the girl doesn't need to have it. Like the Yeah, girl, as, long as, the, as long as the man is a breadwinner, yeah, exactly. the girl's all good, she can be chilling, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah, I feel like it obviously needs to be both because you guys need to be compatible in that sense. You know, the, the girl has to be supportive of your ambitions as well, even if True. she doesn't have her own goals. I mean, like, you know, yeah. things that she the same kind of quality of the things that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. um, so I think like ambition, um, education is really important. Like I said, it's not just about like the degree that you get, but who you become during the journey of going to school you know yeah i think that's uh something that a lot of our culture cares about yeah and um someone who's like a good person you know like mm -hmm. um cares about their religion cares about their family is very family oriented i think that's very important in a marriage in general so i think those if i was to define it to three things those would be the three things yeah uh, uh, there's also a taboo on um divorce yeah right unfortunately so what do you think on that subject so like in our culture it's like oh that, yeah. those two got divorced like or this she's divorced like yeah. she's bad she's and trouble it's unfortunate yeah. because i mean things happen for a reason like it's just pe people get to know each other they live together and they find out that okay they're not compatible you know in that sense and it's it's not the right thing for them in the future to be together, you know, not, not, not necessarily that there's something wrong with the girl or something wrong with the boy. It's just that them, once they got to know each other on a different level, because everyone goes through that honeymoon phase, you know, it can really steer us off from like the reality, reality of being in a relationship. It creates more of a fantasy rather than, you know, what, being in a relationship actually is so once they start living together you know problems may arise and you know having to take uh having to go through the decision of div divorce is something that is not easy but if it's the right thing to do by all means go through it and it it doesn't under it doesn't make the person any less valuable than who they were before they got married yeah. i think and that's what sucks is that there's a taboo on that when People don't r know the real story of what's happening, you know, behind the scenes. They just see what's actually, oh, they just got divorced. But there's a lot more that goes on with it. And I don't know, I feel, I hope that changes, you know, throughout the time. A lot of people, for example, they get married early and um, it's especially because they haven't learned enough about themselves to know what they want. So they end up getting married and then during that journey they realize okay this is not what i should have went for you know and at the end of the day it's all learning experience i mean people like people date they get engaged they get married and they it happens like it's just part of life you know mm -hmm. it's a learning experience and it's a good learning experience you know yeah mm -hmm. no i i get that and it's it's tough because it's funny because with our especially with our culture if you get married, you're also marrying the family exactly. that comes yeah. with it, the extended family. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, I think personally, I think, uh, I think in our culture is good mm -hmm. in terms of that being such a, like they got divorced yeah. because, um, it, it causes you to work things out with your partner mm -hmm. versus like in Western society, it's very easy to just go and say, yeah, I'm done with you. Yeah. Let's go sign the papers, mm -hmm. right? I think with our stuff, especially my parents, I'll say, just as an example, uh, they went through a lot of hardships. Mm -hmm. You know, they come came here, they were poor, and that caused stress, and they had me. Mm -hmm. And, and <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I'm this, <laughs> I mean, as a kid, no. Uh, 
they went through a lot yeah. and it could have been easy like there was times where they wanted to pull the plug yeah. and say we're done with this yeah but now they're in a position where they really care about each other mm. the kids are a little bit grown up yeah um and they now have time to like really appreciate each other mm. whereas before they were a little younger and things were emotions were up and down and trying to figure out life so yeah. I feel like as much as that is a taboo, I feel like that's a good thing to have mm -hmm. because it that's forces true. you to be like, okay, that's not an easy route. We can't just yeah, like pull the exactly. plug here. Whereas now it's mm -hmm. very like, I heard a stat or something that like 46% of couples in North America yeah. like get divorced or something mm -hmm. like that, which is like, don't quote me on that quote, on yeah. that on that fact, but I heard it was something crazy like <laughs> that, mm -hmm. which is insane. Mm -hmm. but that's, a, that's a lot. That's like almost half the people that get married are also yeah. divorced. Exactly. But uh, yeah, I think that personally, I think that's a almost a good thing where it's like, okay, well, you got to work out your problems mm -hmm. first before you mm -hmm. decide to pull the plug. And it challenges them. Like it puts their love on a different level that, you know, it's different when you first get to know each other because you're in that honeymoon phase. But once you go through those challenges, a lot of people choose to, to give up. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it makes your love stronger. You know, if you are actually able to work through that like that's an amazing achievement mm -hmm. you know so you're right about yeah like it helps people work through it and i do agree with that point mm -hmm. um because it's something that is a very um it's a very it's a very like everyone in our culture eventually gets married most people so yeah. it's something shout that out to all the singles that aren't <laughs> married right now <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> um so because it's something that's very important to us and it's very valuable we are more willing to f fight through it you know what i mean it's just it's a very it's something that people need to not just give up after the first fight kind of thing it mm -hmm. it, it, it makes it challenges you as a person it makes you different it makes you want to actually um be more forgiving be more understanding communicate obviously yeah those are all important those are good traits yeah because yeah, it's you're not relying on just on emotion exactly. to make your decisions mm -hmm. at that point yeah uh i think we'll kind of wrap it up in mm -hmm. terms of what maybe one or two questions but mm -hmm. in your eyes especially with okay let's just say there's an undergrad a girl lebanese muslim mm -hmm. going through trying to find her way yeah and uh she doesn't know you know mm -hmm. she's a she could get married and say you know what i don't know if school's for me let's just take the married route mm -hmm. um she doesn't know what to do with her career maybe family's pressuring her to get into sciences which a lot of them do because yeah. oh you know medical field that's like guaranteed money respect True. um what kind of advice would you give that girl coming into yeah. coming into her passing high school mm -hmm. and coming into university now that there's more mm -hmm. responsibility what kind of advice would you give her i would say take the time to learn about yourself learn how to be single as well don't rush into anything um whether you want to go to school or not that's totally your choice but just take the time to learn more about yourself find out what your passions are set a goal for yourself what are where, where do you see yourself now or in like 10 years, like have a personal goal, not like, oh, my goal is to be married or find my Prince Charming. More of like, who do you want to be as a person? And that's really going to help you in future relationships or in future work because you know your value. You, um, you're you not settling for just anything. You know, you, you've you kind of raised the standards and um, you're, you're not settling, like I said. So yeah, take the time for yourself and learn about who you are don't rush into any in, into anything don't let social pressure or anyone pressure you into doing something that you don't want to do you know learn more about certain things that you're you're interested in like whatever it may be and um if you choose to go to, through school go through it and uh enjoy the journey as you're as you're doing school and it's going to be worth it at the end and like I said, like life is le a learning experience and you're always going to be faced with challenges and kind of learn how to cope with those ch with those stressors that are going to arise during school or during relationships or anything. Prioritize yourself as well 
and take care of your mental health and your well-being. Go to the gym. Go to the gym. <laughs> yes. Go through those Instagram videos. Like I said, it's really going to help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What about, uh, you know, decision making? You know, is that is that really like is that an important part in, in your life? Making yeah, making decisions quickly exactly. or making them uh, mm -hmm. properly. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of girls don't don't really. They're very. I'm not going to say all. So don't. N the girls that are listening to this don't get offended, but um, it, they're very swayed. Yeah. With the family. Mm -hmm. So if the family says certain things or the friends or whoever, they kind of shift and they sway. Mm -hmm. How is it important to you for you to you know stay? You know, so, make the decisions that feel right to you instead of being mm -hmm. like, oh, I guess. Yeah. So-and-so told me to go into this and mm -hmm. I'm going to this. So always do your research and follow your gut intuition. So don't just go with the flow. Uh, honestly, like every little decision that you make is going to be, it's going to take you to a different route. You know, it's going to uh, change your life in some way or another. And decision making is something that like, it's something that's important like you at the end of the day it's who do you want to be or who do you see yourself in 10 years and make your decisions based on what you want rather than what other people are telling you so don't let you know peer pressure or, or um just any kind of pressure to influence you to not do you know influence you to do things that you don't want to do mm -hmm. you know especially yeah. when it comes to like marriage at the same time yeah wow yeah. <laughs> i think we're gonna end it off on there yes. Noor, that was that was great so yeah, um where can just before we wrap up mm -hmm. where can people find you on um on social media or where can they, they yeah. reach you at? so my instagram is noor l wazir so that's oh. where i'll be awesome yeah. so any girls that need advice just just yes. dm noor we'll up. we'll have it in the <laughs> in the description i got uh, you yeah Noor, thank you for coming on the second floor. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Ahmed. Yeah, was this was awesome. This yes. was fun. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad I did it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's a wrap. <laughs>